The Real Investment Show. And welcome back to this morning. I'm Rose Lance Roberts. Michael Leibowitz joining me as we uh, get ready to wrap up this hump day edition of The Real Investment Show. Get by our website, realinvestmentadvice.com. Mike Leibowitz's new article is out this morning called Half Truths or the Same Thing as Half Lies. That's on the website right now. Of course, also our Technically Speaking post yesterday talking about margin debt is now at record levels, uh, which is also what's supporting this rally in the market. Uh, you know, once, you, once as we talked about earlier, there are extremely low levels of cash uh, in the market. So if there's very low levels of cash, how do you get more buying power? You'll, you go into debt to do it. And so we're seeing just over the last couple of months in particular, a very big surge in people taking on margin to leverage up to buy more stock. So that's also uh, margin debt is, is terrific. It's, it's, uh, it's like fuel. Uh, for the fire to, to make the to make the fire burn bigger, of course, it's also like we said before, it works, you know, kind of in reverse as well. So when the market starts to decline, it accelerates the decline as well. So it's 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 a double edged sword. But on the way up, it's certainly supportive of higher higher prices, and we're certainly seeing that exuberance getting there. But all those data and charts uh, for both those articles on the website now. Um, for your daily reading, realinvestmentadvice.com. Oh, yeah, Mike, um, just for the break, we left off, so we're going to come back and talk a little bit about Tesla. Tesla is going to join the S&P 500. It will be the seventh largest stock by market capitalization weight, which is how the S&P is weighted, um, when it joins uh, the index on the 21st of the month. So, uh, you know, we've picked on Tesla. If you follow my Twitter feed, I pick on Tesla. And it was kind of for sport before now. But now it's joining the S&P, like you said, and it's going to be about 2% of the index. Mm -hmm. So now it's going to move the market, right? Just like we've talked about Apple and Amazon and the fangs moving the market, right. we can add a T to that for Tesla. Right. So, so, let's, so, so uh, in the words of uh, instead of having fang stocks, we're going to have fat man. T-fangs. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, I, yeah, I think Tesla is a great example of what's going on in, in so many companies. It's just... Tesla is even worse. Right. So first of all, JP Morgan upgraded Tesla today. The price target, mm -hmm. the price target was 80. It's now 90. Right. Sounds good, right? Sure. Sounds good. Well, Tesla is a 680 something dollar stock. Okay. So Tesla is now saying it's worth 90. It's a 680 dollar stock. So even though JP Morgan upgraded the price, that stock price is still 80, 80, 90 percent below where it's at today. Right. So in RA Pro a few days ago, I shared a few graphs just to help our readers comprehend what's going on. So I looked at the sixth largest, the seventh, seven largest auto producers, and I did it by market cap. So what are the companies worth based in the stock market? Mm -hmm. And I pulled out Honda, BMW, GM, Chrysler, uh, Daimler, I'm sorry, Daimler, Volkswagen, and Toyota, okay. not Chrysler. Okay. The, the market caps of those six are equal to Tesla. Okay. So basically, Tesla is as big as the six largest companies, right? Okay. Then we looked at auto sales. Tesla makes 1% of those auto sales. To, companies like Toyota, Volkswagen are the two largest, comprising almost 50%. Okay. So, so what's going on? Right. That, that's kind of the logical step is that may be fair. What if five, 10 years from now, every car is a Tesla? Mm -hmm. Well, you can say Tesla is undervalued, right, by almost half. So so when we kind of do the math and think about it, there's a few things that have to be true in the future for Tesla to be fairly valued, maybe even slightly undervalued. Right. One of those is that electric vehicles are the predominant vehicle of choice in the future, because that's what Tesla sells, right? right? Right. And I'm assuming they don't make any new products, but let's just say their current business line, that we're assuming that electric vehicles are the largest source of cars globally, right? Okay. That, you know, that maybe that happens by, mm -hmm. you know, 2030, late 2020s, uh, that we're assuming that they have a large majority of the entire, that they're selling the large majority of electric vehicles. Mm -hmm. Not likely. We know Volkswagen is stopping making uh, combustion car combustion engines in 2026. We know that every other automaker has 
electric cars either on the market or they're coming to the market, right? Ford has a beautiful looking Mustang coming out. Mm -hmm. Volkswagen ID, it's, I think it's called the ID, there may be a number attached to it, is outselling Tesla in some of the in Norway, Sweden, some of those countries. And GM's coming uh, out with the all electric Hummer. Right, right. Right. These companies aren't just going to go away. They're not going to say, OK, Tesla, you beat us to it. Have at it. Yeah. Right. They're going to the Mercedes has an electric vehicle. They all will. Porsche does, too. Right. Uh, so you're assuming that these companies just lay down and let let Tesla have the market share. Right. You're mm -hmm. also assuming that that no country, the U.S. or any other major country enforces monopoly laws, that they're just going to let Tesla take the whole market. Right. And, and by the way, GM, Ford, uh, and I can't speak for Honda or Toyota, but I can for their for their domestic in U.S. production facilities. They have unions. These unions aren't lightweights. These unions have political clout. Right. And they will not allow that their union workers to all be fired so that Tesla can take over the world. Right. So 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 you got you have monopoly laws, too. Right. And you put all this together. What Tesla has to do to justify its price, I'm not saying it can't happen, but I wouldn't bet for that to happen. I just think there's too much going against it. And to bet against those auto companies, right, to mm -hmm. bet against Toyota and Volkswagen and Honda, forget GM and Ford. And But those those companies are not going to just cede their market share and go away. Well, here, but here's 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 the counter argument for that, right? So and, and I don't disagree with your points, and fundamentally those are all great. Um, but you know we have to go back to talking about passive indexing now because more and more companies. I just posted a chart out this morning. More and more companies are now coming to market to offer exchange traded funds, which these are basically indexed ETFs. And my my question on Twitter this morning is, what happens when there's twice as many ETFs as there are stocks to fill them? Right? Um, you know, so the in theory, if when Tesla joins the S and P 500, then it's got to be added to all these ETFs, which creates buying for all those ETFs. And every time somebody comes out with a new new ETF that gets any types of traction at all in the market that owns ET that owns Tesla or owns the S and P, um, you know, it's going to require buying for Tesla. So it, it seems like there will be a consistent buyer for Tesla always being there because of what we've done with the passive indexing market. As long as the market goes higher. Right. It, right? Well, exactly. it, it works both ways. Yeah. Right. But, you know, first of all, the inclusion into the S&P, I bet a large, large majority of that buying has occurred already. Mm -hmm. A lot of front runners. Right. The, the ETFs may not have bought, but there's a lot of people front running that trade because it's an obvious trade. Right. So they're getting ahead of it. So, uh, you know, we talk about events that can happen in the future. And what is it? December 21st, it gets included. Right. Uh, yeah. That's a date we need to watch close, closely because there could be some very heavy volatility, both up and down in Tesla. And because it will be a 2%, give or take a little, share of the S&P, it can have a big effect on the market as a whole. So, you know, we've never seen a company this large entering the S&P 500, mm -hmm. right? They're normally smaller companies, companies you've heard of, but smaller companies. This one is going to have such a big effect. And it's just its price to earnings, right? Mm -hmm. I did this analysis as two, two, a f about a week ago. It's going to boost the price to earnings of the S&P by five or six points. So it's going to go from already near record levels, levels that we have to go back to either 2000 or 1929. Mm -hmm. I think we're past 1929 we're, we're past already. 29. So, I mean, yeah, and now you can add another five or six to it. Right. So we're at 36 times earnings now on in terms of the P.E. ratio on the S&P. So as soon as Tesla is added, that'll jump up closer towards 40. Right. Right. And when I did my math. Uh, right now, Tesla's P is close to a thousand. Right. I assume that it gets better. That it's only five hundred. <laughs> but even if you bring it down to a hundred, right, it still goes up a few points. Right. Right. To to even more egregious levels than it is today. Well, yeah, and that's and that's you know kind of the real you know thing that we come back to ultimately. And again, you know, the, the the arguments for Tesla are certainly you know are all there, right? You know, they're a technology company, they're a battery company, they're this company, they're that company. And again, all these assumptions are is that nobody else in the industry or in the on the planet 
will come out with a better battery, um, won't, won't come out with a better car, won't come out with a better, you know, uh, technology, whatever it is. But, you know, you know, that's that's one of the problems with kind of the the early pavers here is that he's he's established and he's done a fantastic job. And there's no no doubt. There's no arguing this point. He proved that electric cars would both work and sell. He proved right. it. So all these other major auto manufacturers have been sitting back going, let's l- let him run with it, right? Let's let's see if it works and let him work out all the bugs. And then basically they'll they'll take it and they can run with it from there and have already, you know, kind of proven the, the system's proven out. Um, and they can they can make delivery and manufacturing and production and service and all that. They've got all those logistics in place. It won't take them long to eat up market share uh, pretty quickly, especially if they come out with a better a better vehicle and more importantly a cheaper vehicle. Uh, that's gonna and right. I think that's gonna be really one of the key issues down the road um, when you start talking about 53 three percent of Americans are willing to live in a mini home or a micro home because they can't afford anything else. It's really gonna be who can come out with the cheapest electric car that wins this race probably. Right, right. And I also want to state, look, I, I, I have an incredible amount of admiration for what Tesla has done. They broke into a business that has been incredibly hard to break into, right? Mm-hmm. And they have taken some market share and they've they've made Tesla a household name. And I think it's incredible. What I have a problem with is the share price and valuation. Yeah. It's, not, <laughs> it's not what Elon Musk has done because I think it's just pure genius. I think it's incredible. I just think it's and I, you know, I think the productivity and other things that he is adding to society have value. It's yep. just what the market ascribes to that value is just so out of whack with reality. You got to wrap it up for the day. We'll be back tomorrow morning, of course, with the next edition of The Real Investment Show. Get by the website now. Michael Leibowitz's new article is up called Half Truths Equal Half Lies. That's on the website now, along with our latest Technically Speaking post and more. While you're there, send us your questions, comments, emails, whatever Mike and I can do to answer your questions. Happy to do it. Simply just click the Ask a Question button right there at the website, realinvestmentadvice.com. That's realinvestmentadvice.com. We'll see you tomorrow. Get daily investment news you can use. Delivered at the speed of the internet. Sign up for the Real Investment Report now at realinvestmentadvice.com. It's a rich man's world.